Hello everyone and welcome to the review and unboxing of the Gigabyte Bricks Ultra Compact PC. Many of you may actually notice that this looks a lot like Intel's NUC or Next Unit of Computing Platform. And truth be told, it's actually uh, pretty much exactly the same, except with a few minor differences. Here we go. Once inside the box, you see right on top the actual unit itself. And as you can see, it's pretty tiny. It's about the same size as Intel's NUCs. It measures 4.5 by 4 and a quarter and only about an inch thick. On the back, you'll see that we have an HDMI, DisplayPort or Thunderbolt, Super Speed USB 3.0, and Gigabit Ethernet port. There's also a Kensington lock, so you can secure this if it has to be out in a lab setting at a college or used for digital signage. On the top, there's just the power button recessed, a little chrome power button, and the Gigabyte logo. On the front, there's another super speed USB 3.0. And on the bottom are the access screws to put in the memory and the SSD and to access the Wi-Fi card. Take the top of the box out. Inside is the manual, which most of it appears to not even be in English, surprisingly. Um, the driver CD, and a VESA mount. This VESA mount supports the 100 by 100 millimeter VESA standard, as well as the 74 by 74 millimeter VESA standard. These holes here are where the special screws screw into the back of the unit. And then you'll be able to mount it on the back of a monitor or a TV or even straight to a wall if you wanted to. This appears to be the screws, the VESA screws. And I believe in the bottom of the box is the power adapter and I think this is the other half of the power okay so this particular model is the core i3 version it costs about 299 from Newegg right now they also do make a Core i5 and, surprisingly, a Core i7 version of this. Uh, it will run you about an extra hundred or so dollars as you step up through them. Uh, currently, I believe that the i7 version is almost close to five hundred dollars, which seems to be a bit much for such a compact PC. And, surprisingly, uh, the i7 that is in that model uh, is just a dual core. So I don't know if there's really much benefit to the i7 versus the i3 or even the i5s. Um, but that's, I guess, up to uh, what you want to use the unit for. Now this is a bare bones kit. You will have to purchase memory and also an mSATA SSD. I've gone with a 120 gig mSATA Mushkin SSD. And for now, a single 4 gig stick of DDR3 sodium memory. If we turn this over, we will be able to access the underside where we'll install the memory and the SSD. There is also a Wi Fi card installed, it is an 802.11n wireless and it's a half-height card. Uh, it's pretty nice actually. It's uh, something that the Intel NUC variant does not come with. Uh, this unit also is smaller in respects to Intel's NUC, but not by much. Uh, I think it does look a little sleeker actually. And just get these 
last couple screws. All right. Now, it took me a few minutes to actually figure out what this little knobby thing was here, if you can see it. Uh, this is actually to give you pretty easy access to the bottom of the unit. Inside you'll see the half height wireless end card. Above that is the MSATA port and uh, to the other side are the two SODIMM DDR3 memory slots. This can support up to 16 gigabytes of memory at DDR3 1600 megahertz speed. On the other side of the motherboard, uh, it's pretty uneventful, but there's a BIOS battery and mainly the heatsink and fan for the Intel processor. Installing the memory is simple enough. Just like any laptop. I preferred to go with a 4 gig memory stick for now, just to give myself the option to upgrade to 8 later if I need to. Um, right now you're probably thinking exactly what you may want to use this unit for. Um, there's actually many different uses. It's a fully fledged PC. Uh, the most obvious of usages would be, right off the bat, a home theater PC, since it has HDMI output. Um, my particular use is going to be for digital signage connected to some large HD TVs. The display port on the back of it can do up to 2560 by 1600 resolution, uh, but the HDMI port is limited to 1920 by 1200. It can run two displays simultaneously. The graphics chip is the HD4000, Intel's HD4000, and this can output 1080p video flawlessly. Um, I have a couple other units that I've already hooked up and tested. Um, surprisingly, um, I don't know if it was just the browser I was using or, or what, but YouTube videos at 1080p, they did work, although in some fast motion scenes and some movie trailers, it did show a little bit of choppiness. Um, not sure why exactly. Now, if we undo this one screw here so we can secure down the MSATA. Okay. Installation is relatively simple. Replace the screw. There we are. Okay. This is basically about it to uh, get up and running with the uh, components. Just add the memory, SSD, and replace the back cover. And now all you need to do is install your operating system of choice. For now, I'm going to be running Windows 7 on this. I thought about Windows 8, but this needs to go in a production environment for this particular unit. And as it stands right now, we're going to be continuing with Windows 7, probably until Windows 8.1 comes out later in the year. And we just secure down these last few screws. And there we are. Now, as I said earlier, this particular unit costs about $299 for the Core i3 version. The Core i5 version runs for about $379, and the i7 runs for $489. Now, with, coupled with the RAM and the SSD, you're going to be looking at probably close to $500 some odd dollars if you go with just the i3 version with a 4 gig memory stick that costs about 30 to 35 dollars and a 120 gig SSD within the 100 dollar range. Um, in my opinion that's a bit much for a computer of this size I think. Um, there, there are other 
alternatives, I believe, that are cheaper and perform the tasks just as well of what I think you'd be using this for. Um, but in all intents and purposes, this, this machine can be used for just about anything. As I said, home theater PC usage, digital signage, uh, but also can be used as a general purpose workstation. Uh, if you need to do just basic computing, internet browsing, um, uh, also can be used as a server if need be. Uh, your choice of Windows server, a Linux server, uh, whatever you really have in mind. I guess it's up to you whether you really want to have a small machine to take up less space and less power. Well, that concludes the, the review and unboxing of the unit. Uh, I may post a later video. So until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.